Hola, geometry students, and welcome to the lesson for 9.6. Make sure you are checking those extra examples in your book, and you know what solving a right triangle means by the end of this lesson. So let's get right into it. 9.6, just going to do a couple examples here. There are a lot more examples here in your book, though, as well. So 9.6 here, you've got, uh, I haven't checked before. I did check, but I don't remember how many examples there were. So three, just three extra examples here. Uh, again, some very useful stuff, though. You can see trig, just based on stuff you have here. There's some definite practical applications uh, that we can use with trigonometry. Engineers, definitely using it all the time. Surveyors, and uh, lots, lots of different people, lots of different careers using, using trigonometry to figure out parts of missing triangles. So first of all, I want to kind of define what it means to to solve a right triangle. So solve, I'll say solving a right triangle instead. Solving a right triangle. Means we have to find all three angle measures and all three side lengths. You're going to be given three different pieces of information in each one. You need at least three to be able to solve a right triangle. Uh, so three or more, I should say, given at least three or more. And to solve the right triangle, you got to figure out the rest, either using just basic triangle sum theorem stuff, that the fact that angles add to 180, or using uh, Pythagorean theorem or using some tricks. So all those things could come into play here. So a pretty good review lesson. Not really learn anything new from what we learned here in in uh, 9.5. We had stuff here. We are going to be using this stuff a lot. So referring back to this, this is our second of two trig lessons for geometry. So let's start off with. Oops. Oh, that's why because it's on vertical. There we go. So let's start off with a another right triangle. This one, I'm going to put the right angle up in the upper right hand corner instead for the sake of this example. This is going to be my right angle right here. And let's give these vertices some labels. This is M. This is going to be A. And this is going to be N. So I spelled man there. And this will be a lowercase n and lowercase m. You may notice that capital M is across from lowercase m. This is pretty commonplace to see that the capital letter and lowercase letter are the same across from it. It doesn't necessarily have to be that way, though. Um, but just to point that out quick, and this will be 20 degrees. This is a side length of 15. And so to solve this right triangle, we need to figure out all three angles and figure out all three sides. So what I would start off with here is actually this angle right here. So I'm going to I'm going to do some stuff in, I'll, I'll do this in red. This doesn't have to be in a different color on yours, but it's going to be, I think, just make it a little easier to stand out here. I'll do my, my work. If you want to use a different color for this lesson, you can, but you don't have to, once again. Uh, so this one, this is 90 and this is 20. That makes this angle very easy to figure out. We just do the measure of angle N is going to be 180 minus the sum of those two. So if you do 90 plus 20, you get 110. So if you would say 180 is, or it's 180 minus 110, you're correct. That's 70 degrees. So measure of angle N, that one is a piece of cake here. Mmm, cake. Okay. What's your favorite kind of cake? Mine is carrot cake. Carrot cake is, I think, the best kind of cake that there is. Um, it's just like the perfect consistency and it's, it tastes a little a little healthier than normal cake. I don't think it, I don't know if it really is. Uh, but let's figure out these other two parts now as well. So to figure out N, notice I can use either this angle, 70 degrees, or I can use this one, 20 degrees. I'm going to use the ones that were actually given to me. So this part, I'm going to circle some stuff here in orange. Don't circle this stuff. This is just to to make a point. I'll erase these in a second. So I have this part given to me. 
Let's say I wanted to solve for M first, since it's the first letter alphabetically, I'll just go with that one first. So I want to solve for M. I have this given to me, and I have this given to me. What am I going to use? What ratio is that? So going back to this, going back to 9.5, thinking about these ratios, thinking about Oscar had a headache over algebra or Sokotoa, which one do I want to use here to solve for that? So don't I have opposite, and don't I have the hypotenuse? Hypotenuse here is across from that right angle right there. So I have opposite and hypotenuse. That means I'm going to use sine for this one. So let's erase what I just did there. So just think about what I had circled, keep that in mind, we're going to use 20 with M and the 15. So with this I would say the sine of 20 degrees equals opposite is M over hypotenuse is 15. And so with this one we can think of it like this, cross multiply, think of it as you can flip flop the 15 and the sine of 20 if you want to do that in one step instead of two. If that doesn't make sense to you though then do it in two steps instead, but I'll do I'll do both steps here for those of you that like that better. I like to see that all worked out there, so that will cancel out there and there, and then I'm left with m equals 15 over the sine 20. And so now, yeah, something wasn't feeling right to me me there. Did you notice my mistake? This is, I did this on, I did that on purpose. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I did that on purpose. Just to make a, a point. <laughs> yeah, I'm, I'm going to erase this stuff here. So I'm going to ask you to do the same thing here too. What was my mistake there? What did I do wrong? Did you catch it? Did you see what I did wrong? When I cross multiplied stuff, I got in too big of a hurry there. I said it was m times sine of 20 instead of 15 times the sine of 20. So I was actually doing more work than I needed to. So 15 times the sine of 20 degrees equals m. That means I don't have to divide by anything. I've got my answer right there. I just need to multiply this out in the calculator. So I would take this is going to be, just take 15 times, and then with mine I have to hit 20 first and then sine. You might have to hit sine first and then 20 on your calculator. So this is saying the sine of 20 is 0 0.34202, so on. If I hit enter or equals from there, it will multiply that by 15. So this becomes now 5.13. Uh, this lesson, I'll go with two decimal places instead of one, just because they might switch it up on you. Uh, so at that point, now we've got two of the parts, two of the six parts. Uh, and so let's now do or n. So we have this right here. Don't do the stuff in orange. This is just to help you see what's going on here. So with this one, again, we have the hypotenuse still, 15. And this time I have what's adjacent or right next to the 20 degrees. So I'm going to use adjacent and hypotenuse. The one that uses that is the ka part, the so ka toa cosine for that. So let's get rid of those things there. Oops, I think I went too far. There we go. And so this would be cosine now of 20 degrees. It's going to be adjacent over hypotenuse. Adjacent is n over hypotenuse is 15. Make it a fraction if you would like to see it like that. And then cross multiply, you've got 15 times cosine of 20 degrees equals n. So you can plug that into a calculator and get that n is approximately. We're going to take 15 times, and then I'll hit 20 on mine, and then cosine. So this is a cosine at 20 degrees, pretty close to 1. And if I hit equals, that will multiply that by 20, or by 15, sorry. And I forgot what that was already. So that was point, this would be point 0.10 if I were to round that off to the nearest hundredth. So point 0.10. No units given to me here, so I have not included any units. If there were centimeters or inches or something to that effect, we would include those things here. So I've got the three parts. I should also include the other parts that are actually in there. If I'm going to solve for the right triangle, I should say all three angles and all three sides. So the measure of angle M, it's right there given to me. It's 20 degrees. 
a measure of angle A. Hopefully that's clear to you that that's 90 degrees. That's what that box in the corner means. And then MN is the other side. I should not say segment MN. I should say MN without the segment mark above it. So the distance from N to N is 15. You could say that this one equals MA. And you could say that this one equals AN. I totally switched those around. Okay, you could say that this one equals AN, and this one equals MA down here. So let's get that right, and then we'll move on. So M is AN or NA would work, and then this one is MA or AN. So you've got all six parts there. You've got all three angles here, here, and here. You've got all three sides here, here, and here. So we have successfully solved for this right triangle. All right, so, huh. Who's that? That looks like Pac-Man. I think Pac-Man needs some eyes. Doesn't he have eyes in the game? I feel, I feel like he should have some eyes right there. So there we go. Now I feel better about Pac-Man. Why I use Pac-Man well, as a picture. So we just did man for the vertices of the other triangle. This time I'm going to go. You probably have guessed it already. But P, A, and C will be my vertices for this triangle. So Pac-Man is finished up. This one's going to be a 5. I'm going to make this a lowercase a. I'm going to put a, a little curl so this doesn't look like a 9 to you. I'll put a little curl on my a there. Um, good idea to do that with a's. Sometimes they can look like 9's if you're not careful with them. So solve for the right triangle here with this one. So this previous one. We knew one angle and we knew one side. and it was pretty easy to figure out the rest knowing sine, cosine, and tangent. This one we've got a little twist here though. We've got two of the sides and just one angle, just the right angle given to us. We don't have either one of these angles. So to be able to figure this out, I think what is easiest first is to actually use the Pythagorean theorem to solve for A. Solve for lowercase a. So to solve for lowercase a, first you would say that leg squared plus leg squared equals hypotenuse squared. You've got A is the hypotenuse. So you have 5 squared plus 11 squared, your two legs squared. Sum of those is the hypotenuse squared. So this is 25 plus 121 equals A squared. And you add those together, you get 146 equals A squared. From there you would take the square root of both sides and you'd get just plain old a, the square root and square would cancel. So you have a is the square root of 146. Now you could get this into simplified radical form. Uh, let's do both here. So 146, let's see if that is divisible by 4. It's not divisible by 4. Uh, so let's check the next perfect square then. 146 divided by 9. You could use your sum of the digits little shortcut 2 to check that too. So that doesn't work. 146 divided by 16. Well, if 4 didn't work, there's not going to be... 16 is not going to work either. Um, get that. So I can tell 25. I can tell any odd number is not going to go into there. So there's no use in checking those things. Uh, and as you check more and more, 146, if you checked 36, the next even number, that's not going to go into there. And then you're just getting too big after that to, to even be reasonable to go in there anymore. So 64, that doesn't work. And so this is actually in simplified radical form. This would be an exact answer. And if you were to take this as an approximate answer, you would get, let's put that into the calculator, 146. Take the square root of that. And where is my square root button? It is right there. There it is. So this is 12.08. I'm still going to go with two decimal places in this one. Let me just make sure that, yep, this is a 3, so that's going to be an 8 right there. So 12.08 to the nearest hundredth. So we've got three parts now, four parts now that we know. I'm going to write down the other things that I know right now. So this is A was 90 degrees and I knew that PA equals 5 and I knew that AC equals 11. So we are two-thirds of the way there. We've four, got four out of the six parts. And so now we just need to figure out what are these two angles. So go back to your trigonometric ratios. 
and let's use the things that are actually given to us here. So we are given this and this. Don't draw that in there. This is just to, to make a, a point. Um, I'm making circles to make a point. Ha ha ha! Geometry joke, okay. Funny, funny, funny stuff. Making circles to make a point here that this is going to be using, well, angle C, you have the opposite given to you right there, and you have the adjacent part given to you right there. We're not going to use this part that we rounded off. We want to use the exact numbers that were given to us originally to help solve for this. So, which one uses opposite and adjacent? If you forgot, go back. To this you're gonna have to get this memorized eventually though that sine cosine and tangent in order that they go in toa is the opposite over adjacent part the over algebra part so we're gonna be using opposite over adjacent we're gonna be using tangent and so this one we have tangent of C equals opposite is 5 opposite of angle C is 5 and adjacent to it is 11 okay so this is our fraction so how do I figure out C? Can I divide by tangent? No, this is this is a number by itself. This is just saying tangent of that angle. This represents just one decimal type number, or one, not necessarily a decimal. C is going to be a certain angle measure. And so this, whatever this equals, has to be 5 11. So if you've looked at your calculator, you may have noticed this inverse, inverse sign button. Um, so I think mine, yep, mine looks like that. I have to hit this. I and B for inverse, and then I have these sine to the negative one, cosine to the negative one, tangent to the negative one buttons here. We're not worrying about these other ones, that's for a, a later class. Um, but sine, cosine, and tangent inverse, we're going to be using those things here. So we are taking the, uh, not the, the opposite of, of C, but the inverse of C. If you were to multiply something by five, the inverse of multiplying is dividing, it undoes the multiplication and division undoes multiplication. If you were to add something to something, subtraction is the inverse of adding. And so the inverse of tangent is tangent inverse. We don't have a special name for it other than that. So we're going to take the inverse tangent of both sides and we write that out in the front of the parentheses. So I'm putting that right here, inverse tangent, and putting that right here, inverse tangent. If you were to write it off, off to the side here, I'm not going to get terribly picky about that. But inverse tangent, what does an inverse do to the original thing? It cancels out the original thing. So what am I left with here? I'm left with just plain old C. And so on this side, I'm left with the tangent inverse, or the inverse tangent of 5 elevenths. And so C, we should technically add one other thing here that's not just C, but it's the measure of whatever angle C is. And so at this point, now we get to use another new button on our calculator. Did I close my calculator? I sure did. So I take this back out. And so type in the fraction 5 over 11. And some of you will have a slightly different calculator. You might have to hit tangent inverse first, and then type in the fraction in parentheses. So pause and rewind that if you need that re-explained. Um, but for me, I have to hit, type in my fraction first, and then I'm going to hit this inverse tangent button from there. And so that's going to take the inverse tangent of that number, and it gives me this number from that. So 24.4439, that rounded off to the nearest hundredth, would be 24.44. So the measure of angle C <coughs> is approximately 24.4 four degrees. So from this point, something you could do is say, maybe you, you notice this, you plug in 24.44 here, wouldn't it be pretty easy to figure out P from there based on the fact that this is 24.44 and this is 90? You just do 180 minus those two, I'm going to give you that one. So that is one way you could do it, but if you do that that way, be careful, be very careful because if you made a mistake on this right here, that means you're not going to get the right thing for P either. So I would recommend actually doing both this way and then seeing that your answer works out by adding the three angles together and seeing if it adds to 180. So I'm going to get some more practice here with you on doing this sort of thing one more time. Let's uh, just look up here for a second. Don't write this 
orange part down that I'm writing down right now. But look at this, this, and this. So this is a given stuff, given parts to you. P and 11 is the opposite of angle P. And here, 5 is adjacent right next to the P. So what are we going to use? In this case, it's still tangent because you still have opposite and adjacent. But now we're just kind of flip-flopping the fraction around from before. So this is going to be now right here. I'm going to have to go off into the gray space a little bit. That's OK. So the tangent of P equals 11 over 5. It's opposite over adjacent still. So from this point, what would you do to get rid of this tangent in front of the P? I want just P by itself. That didn't sound good, but I just, I just want the P by itself here. And so we take the inverse tangent again of that. So that's going to cancel out there and there. What we're left with is P. And here we're left with inverse tangent of 11 fifths. And so in front of the P, we need to include measure of the angle. It's not just P, but it's the measure of that angle is that. So at that point, take out a calculator and type in. Again, some of you may have to type in. may have to hit this first and then type in your fraction from there. For my calculator here, I have to do that in the reverse order. I have to type in the fraction first, 11 divided by 5 first, and then hit the inverse tangent button from there. So if I take the inverse tangent of 11 fifths, which is the same as 2.2, I get 65.556 and so on. This rounded to two decimals would be 65.56. So the measure of angle P is about 65.56. And remember before I said it's good to do it this way because you can check your answer a little better. If you made a mistake here and then you just subtract 90 minus this to get this answer, you're not really sure if you did this right. This is a, a better better way to verify that we did this right. So if I take this number and I add 24.44 to it, I should get, oops, I did three fours, but that's going to be okay. I should get really, really close to 90. I did round this off a little bit, so there's still going to be some decimal junk left over at the end. Uh, but if this is 90, then these two add to 90, and the whole thing would add to 180. So that is a good way to check our answer there. So we're all set to go with that. We've got all six parts. We got all three angles. Here's A, C, and P. We got all three sides. We've got PA, we got AC, and this would be the same thing as I could put this as equal to PC. So if you, if you wanted to write it like that too, you could do that. Okay, so that's all we're doing here. Check out the extra examples in your book. That stuff didn't make sense to you. Um, but let me know if you had any questions in class. We'll be practicing solving for right triangles more in class.